Hi there, Janet Fritzer for Galaxy Girl Creations. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to the Craft IQ Challenge for the month of March 2022. Um, we had a list of several items. So we were supposed to start with the sketch that we are using over in 30 days of sketches. So I did that. And then we had to use flowers. We had to use seven of one type of embellishment, not including the flowers. Um, some colored cardstock, use a triangle in the, the design, add uh, something metal or with a metallic finish. And then as a bonus, we were supposed to stamp around the, um, the triangles. So I went to my Chamel papers, which I have not used in quite some time. And it was like breathing a breath of fresh air. Um, I think just because I haven't used them in so long and I really enjoy her papers. Um, it was, I don't know, it just felt like new and exciting again. I was kind of bored with the stuff that was in my stash otherwise. Um, and I haven't bought new paper in a while. So um, this was kind of like revisiting an old friend, if you will. And so I pulled out my scallop punch, um, which is from X Cut. And uh, it's my one of my favorite punches because the scallop is a really good size. And so I um, used some white paper to go ahead and trim the edge off using that scallop punch so that I'd have a scallop border on the top and the bottom. Um, I did measure, but it's a little bit shorter than I really wanted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut those scallops off. And then I am going to uh, bridge the gap with this green paper. This is really the closest thing I had on hand uh, at the time to green cardstock. It is from one of the paper pads that comes with like a solid color, but it is white on the back side. So I don't know if it actually counts as cardstock, but it's the closest thing I had when I was working on this um, without running to my mom's house next door. <laughs> so I don't use a lot of cardstock. I, it's all mostly at her house, but there, I, there were a couple of pieces in this paper pad that I had here. So that's why I used it. I did run those two green strips through my sewing machine twice. So there are two white um, stitched rows on there and here's how I just kind of extended that white rectangle a little bit further it's not a lot it's just a little bit but it was just the perfect amount because I just felt like it was a little bit too short um, or yeah too short <laughs> and so I'm just kind of piecing it back together and I'm using my liquid glue to do that because I wanted the flexibility of being able to slide things underneath it and I think the tape my ATG on the tape um, is a little bit wider and I wouldn't be able to kind of tuck the white border underneath or the white uh, scalloped piece underneath as well because uh, once I got that ATG on there it would have taken up almost the whole width of that green paper um, and then I have three photos here so this is a these are photos of Noah and his dad building the sandbox that we bought for him. And um, then there is a photo there of Noah playing in the sand as well. And they are not positioned in the correct order uh, on at this point in time on my layout, but I was just kind of getting a feel for where I wanted things. Um, and given I had a ver uh, two vertical and one horizontal, uh, I kind of was kind of playing with that and trying to figure out how I was going to put it down. So now they are positioned, oh, nope, they're still positioned incorrectly. So the two outer ones need to be swapped because uh, in the right-hand one, he's building it. And in the other one, the left-hand one, he is, uh, Noah's already playing in it. So I wanted them kind of a little bit chronological there. I did pull out this awesome stamp set. This is from um, Ellie's Studio. And it is called, hmm, what is it called? <laughs> It's the Star Jane Alphabet Stamp. I knew it had star in it, but I, I knew there was another word. Star Jane Alphabet Stamp. And I am lining that up on one of my acrylic blocks to say adventures. And I only have one E, and that's why there is a gap there. I put the first E in and then um, spelled the word until I needed the E for the second letter. And then I will go ahead and put it, um, have to stamp that first E individually. Um, hmm. Oh, I think what I'm doing here is I'm kind of measuring to see that I will have enough room for both. So I am taking more of that green paper. I'm backing it with some orange foam and I'm going to run it through my uh, sidekick 
to um, die cut these letters, which are in a kind of a similar font to the stamp, but it doesn't have the stars, obviously. So I am going to add stars by using a little tiny stamp from um, a Kelly Perky stamp set that I have. It's one of her planner stamp sets. Don't even know if it's available any longer. It's been years that I've had it, but any tiny little stamp, uh, star stamp would work to create the same effect. So I'm just kind of mimicking the alphas that I am going to stamp um, from Ellie Studio. And I am putting some of these little stars across the green letters now that I have them cut. I can kind of figure out where the placement would be uh, most appropriate. So I'm liking how that looks. Um, it just gives a little extra detail and uh, mimics the, st the stamped alphas that I'm going to stamp shortly. So I am just trying to figure out how high I need everything and where I want to put it, making sure I've got enough room. And it looks like I do. And I am going to do a test stamp on it because um, I'm not the best stamper. And I'm not using like a Misty or anything like that. I'm just uh, going rogue here <laughs> and stamping it um, on a block. And it, it works out for me. Unfortunately, I do have to restamp one of the letters. Um, it doesn't stamp perfectly, but I did do the test stamp because, uh, which I was glad I did because a couple of the letters, the N and the T were tilted just a little bit one direction. So I kind of just moved them over a tiny bit. So they were more vertical and, uh, it worked out fine. So that is what I was doing there. I was just kind of playing with it, trying to figure it out. I did draw a line with my ruler there to kind of line it up to make sure they, that all of the letters were lined up. Um, horizontally and uh, it looked like they were pretty close. I think I did have to adjust one letter that was a little bit low or a little bit high. I can't remember which um, but that's a good way to do it is to do a test run. Now when I stamp it here um, it doesn't stamp as perfectly but that's okay. I, I'm able to go in and fix the E uh, which doesn't stamp a hundred percent. Luckily the you know it's clear stamps so you can pretty well see where you're putting them um, so it does it does a pretty good job of fixing it I don't think you can tell at the end of the day so my title there is sandbox adventures and I'm pretty happy with the way that it came out um, with <laughs> when I did move it around the because I used the, the liquid glue the white paper kind of popped out from underneath but um, it's all good now it's all fixed and tucked in so now I'm just going to use my liquid glue uh, to adhere all of those alphas down. Um, I will put a link for the die set that I used to create that and to the uh, stamp from LA Studio down below for you. And uh, on that note, I will tell you that I do use affiliate links for some of these things. Um, so if you do purchase through the affiliate link, I do get a commission back on that. It is required for me to tell you that and that it is considered a paid promotion, even though I don't get paid for doing these um, videos. So I only get any, get a little bit of money back if you uh, do purchase through the link. I'm not telling you you need to go and do that. I'm just letting you know because I'm required to tell you. <laughs> um, so... I am trying to figure out what my seven items are going to be. And I, th I think they're going to be these ants. And I think there were actually eight ants, eight or nine ants on that puffy sticker sheet. Uh, so I thought that would be perfect because as we all know, there, you know, we do get bugs in the sandbox. And so I thought that was actually a really good embellishment to include on there. And then I had this rub on, it says, let the sun shine in or something to that effect. So I thought that was really, a, um, a good embellishment so that because he is playing outside and he actually the where we have positioned his sandbox is right under one of our big redwood trees so he doesn't get a ton of sun it's really filtered sun sunlight which is nice because uh, he doesn't have to wear as much sunscreen that way because he is in the filtered light and it's not as hot so um I mean, he still does wear sunscreen, but it's not as detrimental if he goes longer than he should without it. So 
Then I just started going through a bunch of my Chamel embellishments, which I have kind of sequestered into their own little um, I, I, bags. They're not really bags. They're own, own little envelopes. I guess they're actually photo envelopes or something like that. But um, that was kind of fun to go through those again. I haven't used them, like I said, in a long time. And it was really nice to be able to just kind of look through those. Uh, you can see at the top of my screen, I did consider filling in the letters that I had stamped with some ink. And I would have done that with my Wink of Stella pens, but I wasn't crazy with how it looked, uh, crazy about how it looked. So I left it black and white. <laughs> I decided not to do it, but um, it was awesome because I already had that image stamped that I tested with so I could try it on there and see uh, if I liked it or not. I did come across this large embellishment um, that is floral. So I am definitely going to use that because it matches this paper perfectly. And I really liked this piece that says imagination is everything because when he's in his sandbox, he really is using his imagination quite a bit. Um, he does dinosaur digs. Uh, his mom and, and um, he and his mom make salt dough dinosaur bones and they're, they make them so they look pretty, uh, pretty cool. Like there's jaw bones with teeth and all that kind of stuff. And then they bake them and then he uses them in the sandbox to dig, um, to dig them up. He also plays with his trucks and his excavators in there. He also plays with the sand tools and pretends he's doing stucco work like his dad sometimes does. Um, just, you know, fun things like that. So, um, I wanted to make sure that I included some of the things that he does in his sandbox in this layout. So using his imagination is one of those things. I am just kind of playing around with um, figuring out where I want my embellishments. The one that's on the right, lower right hand side, it says good, good things take time. I thought that was really fitting because he did have to wait for that sandbox. Um, he had to wait for it to come and then it was delayed in shipping and then he had to wait for dad to be around to, uh, to set it up and then he had to wait for um, for us to level out the ground in the area that we wanted to put it in. So it wasn't a long wait um, once it got here, but it still took time. When, once it got here, it was assembled and put up the same day, but w he it was like late in the day, like 5 o'clock, 5 or 5.30 at night. And um, so he did get to play in it, but uh, it was a very short play before he had to come in and get dinner and all of that kind of stuff. But um, I thought it was fitting. So I went to the wood pieces. It's a piece of paper that you can cut out. It looks like little wood planks and it has sayings on it there. And I thought that would be my triangle. It's a visual triangle of three embellishment areas, not actual physical triangles. Hopefully that counts because I could not figure out a way to get an actual triangle on this layout. So that's what I went with. Um, I will be doing some stamping in my three different areas as well. So I do get that bonus. Um, you know, I, it was kind of funny when we were, uh, doing, I was on the live, um, that Jackie did for the last month's or actually for this month's. And, uh, we were talking about it being a lot like whose line is in any way. If you, re uh, watch that show, um, where they say, you know, the points don't matter. That's kind of how this is. The points don't really matter, but I do get bonus points for those, those stamping, um, stamped images. And I'm just going to use that same little star stamp that I used on the letters. And I'm going to use it in those three embellishment areas. So I really liked that big red speech bubble looking thing, red and purple on the left hand side to do some journaling in there and then there will be additional journaling in the two cards that are above the photos but I really liked that piece because I felt that it was um, weighted a lot more with the darker color than having the kaleidoscope looking kaleidoscope is that the right word it's not a kaleidoscope spirograph um, spirograph is the word I was looking at uh, I originally had the spirograph air down there, but it was white, mostly white. And so I felt like it wasn't weighted enough on the left hand side. So bringing in that red and purple, um, being darker colors, it felt more weighted to me and like the layout was no longer, uh, as lopsided. So I'm a lot happier having that down there. And then as you could see, I cut off 
the piece of the floral that was not in use and I brought it over uh, just above that speech bubble as well. Now some of these things I am popping up onto some foam to give some added dimension um, and I really like the way that that looks. I am popping all of those little wood planks up onto some foam and I am going to pop the heart up onto some foam as well and I'm, I'm really liking that. Uh, the butterfly wings are also popped up onto some foam and um, same with the yellow piece that says let the sunshine in and I really like the added dimension that it gives um, so this layout really does count for 30 days of sketches but I've also got on my channel today the stretch the sketch video using the same sketch but um, stretching it to a double page layout so if you want a bonus video to see how this sketch was used, you can go check that one out. <clears throat> so don't forget to check out everyone else who is playing along with the Craft IQ Challenge. Links will be down below for that. Um, I will include the links for 30 days of sketches as well, since this is really applicable for that as well. And um, that way you have tons of inspiration to go and check out. The foam that I'm using is just the cheap crap craft foam from Walmart. It is adhesive backed on one side. Uh, the other side is I just use my liquid adhesive to adhere it down. I am also using some liquid adhesive to hold those little um, ants down because the puffy stickers I don't feel like they stay very well. And then I think I've got everything on there. I've got some orange in the heart and in actually the background paper has orange in it as well. My metallic, um, the border around the piece that says good things take time is actually uh, metallic and so is the this is cool in the spirograph piece. Um, I've also got the seven little ants, flowers on the background, and colored cardstock. If you're not aware, there is a Facebook group for the Craft IQ Challenge. I'll leave that link down below for you also. Thank you so much for watching. If you have questions or comments, you can leave them down below. I will get back to you as quickly as I can. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch my channel today. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up if you don't mind. I will see you guys again tomorrow with another video. Bye-bye.